Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we look at numbers and try to figure out what's going on there. There's just a bunch of crazy stuff going on with Zillow's announcement that they're not going to buy homes. Uh, I think people are making it uh, a bigger deal than it needs to be, but it's still kind of fun to look at and try to figure out why they're doing what they're doing. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, that little tech company's iBuyer cat fight, a little fight out. But uh, also need to announce that today, if you hit the subscribe button and the like button, you could go all day without getting one of those extended car warranty calls on your phone. So that's a big deal. Um, I haven't got mine yet, and that might be why. So how many homes are on the market here in the Phoenix Valley? 7,590. That's about 100 less than last week. Not significant, but, uh, you know, I keep wanting the number to go higher and i'm not seeing it yet thanks betta for the uh, shout out there seven day moving average is showing that we have 4023 homes that came on the market the blue line over here with 3745 going under contract that's a <coughs> difference of 278 with 1729 homes having price reductions and we're going to talk about how many of those are actually zillows and that's the curious thing about this this market right now and this news that's going on with zillow now let's talk about what the i buyers are and what their business model was and what some of the things are that have changed as you know we've talked about i buyers here quite often and over this past year a lot of them changed how they went to the market so last year you had to log on like let's say open door you had to submit a request for them to purchase your home and they'd give you a value and then you could just ignore it or you could say yeah let's talk you can even and even to this day you can ask a real estate agent on your behalf to request and send it in and that real estate agent can represent you um, and the real estate agent gets a small commission from open door for doing that and they're pretty smooth transitions um, i know that uh, uh, I've done it a couple times and they are very responsive because they have staff and so you get you know things go back and forth really quick it's really easy to agree on a price with them even if you uh um you know try to submit an offer to buy one of their houses and you lowball them they'll come back with something they don't just flat out reject your offer so purchasing from them has been pretty seamless the repair process has been difficult uh they i ran into one out in uh, Fountain Hills where they agreed to do repairs. We went out and, you know, the contractor never showed up. And, and when he did do repairs, he did them wrong. And, uh, but the person on the other, end, the other end that's answering the phone doesn't have any skin in the game. They're not going to make any commission off it if it sells or not. And we got down to where we had like $500 in differences between us on what needed to be repaired. And she literally said, oh, okay. I said, you know, we might have to walk away. And she's like, all right. Uh, we finally, finally came to an agreement on that. So that part is kind of a con on dealing with them. So what's going on here? So Zillow said, all right, no more. We're not buying any homes. Uh, we don't have enough people to, you know, replace the carpet fix the paint. All of that sounds really legitimate. Um, I know my brother said that his wife went to uh, Walmart to get some paint yesterday and they didn't even have base colors of paint. They're just completely out. So not only having a labor issue, you're having a supply chain issue. So maybe Zillow tired of trying to find paint across the country. I don't know. But why didn't Open Door bail out? So that's why everybody's really chattering about this. And you see some other curious stuff going on right now. And then I'm going to tell you another theory that's out there that, that may have some, some legs. Because right now, you know, their numbers are they're there, but they're rather insignificant. They're not even 2% of our market here. So trying to correlate them with a future crash uh, might make people feel good, but it just doesn't work for me. I'm not seeing that. What's going on is uh, is interesting. So the Cromford report came out today, and it's small, so I'll read this to you, and I'll move this over here. Um, of the listings shown active on Zillow's website, and we're going to look at that, the average current list price is 6% less than the average price they paid, according to the affidavit of value filed for the county. They bought it here, and then it's down 6%. Why? I mean, they overpaid. Of course, they changed the they charge the seller for a fee, but this six percent represents an average loss of twenty eight thousand per home. 
This is a very strange business model. Buy high, sell low. The price cuts are being made very swiftly on the homes that don't sell. They do not seem to be waiting for the market to catch up with their initial pricing. How many price reductions do they have? Of the 252 Zillow-owned listings in Phoenix, 182 have had at least one price reduction, an average price drop of $41,000. Why is that? It's not because the market's going down. The market is not going down. The prices for homes and the price per square foot are not going down. But I think this is an example of things that you've heard me talk about before where people are shooting for the moon. I think I can get this price for my home. I think they came out and did that, even though they are the ones that have all the research and all the data. So they're cutting prices because they came in and bought high. They wanted to increase their market share. So they started making these offers that were really high. And wait till I tell you what Open Door is starting to do. So they came in and made these offers that were really high fixed them up, put them on, now they're too high. So they had to reduce the price just to sell them. But why are they reducing the prices across the board right now? What's the panic? Um, they've got, money-wise, Zillow cash on hand. So they're not, they're not short of cash. They have $4,735,000,000 cash on hand, an increase of 32.6% versus last year. So it's not like they're strapped for money. They don't have a big bond payment coming up. They've got plenty of cash. If they wanted to pay people more money to fix them up, they can find them that way. Um, why force yourself to be losing more money on homes that you already bought? And that's why people are really trying to dissect this and figure out because, you know, look, here's, here's the true story of the Phoenix market right now. Anyway, is you've got 47% of homes are still getting over their list price, but what is your list price? If you're listing it too high, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And in the price range that they're playing in between four and five, uh, they're going for $11,000 over list. So why all of a sudden are you dumping these properties? Down here is an article here in Fox 10 Phoenix where they interviewed Tina Tambor from the Cromford Report. And she says there has been a bit of a jolt to the real estate market as Zillow announced it's halting its home buying program called Zillow Offers in Phoenix and other cities. Zillow's inventory has grown 1000% since last year in Phoenix. Just in Phoenix, said Tina Tambor, senior analyst with the Cromford Report. When they purchase a home, they have to sell it right away. Sometimes you have to wait for that inventory to dissipate. And they're not doing that. They're not waiting for it. Uh, they're they're, they're going to stop. So I guess they are waiting for it. They're going to stop, get that down to what they call a more manageable level. But in the meantime, they're letting the other guys just run wild. So it uh, it got interesting. I found an article. It's actually a video, and I put it in the link below. And it's from... Um, it's a it's a cool site that I like to look at. They're they're a lender up in Seattle, and they they help mortgage officers. And uh, they were talking and saying that um, what happened was all of a sudden, open door. Remember, I said that you would call them or you would reach out to them, and then they give you an offer. They started looking at homes that are actually listed on the MLS and calling the listing agent and making offers making full price offers on homes that were listed with no fees. They weren't asking for any concessions or fees at all. Just a clean sale, I'd like to buy your home. That was the shot heard around the world in the iBuyer market. And according to this guy's thesis, he thinks Zillow just said, whoa, we're not playing in that sandbox. So Zillow Open Door is confident when they look at Fannie Mae's uh, forecast for next year that what they're buying is probably going to be up 7% more next year. So they're confident in their business model that they're going to make money. And they better be confident because they're taking quite the risk. Now, if the market ever turns, um, you know, they're out of business. So, but they're smart people. So I'm sure they've got something going on. And I'm sure they're sitting around going, well, okay, if the market goes down 6%, What's our business model then? And that's what you're seeing. That's why I call this a cat fight. You're seeing these eye buyers trying to figure out how to compete in this market. And it seems to me that Open Door threw this punch and Zillow fell on the mat. Because you look here, here's an example of a house. It's in Goodyear. They listed it at 511,000, lowered it to 49, 474. 449 now it's 434 they are indeed lowering prices 
And uh, I'm not going to click through all these. I pulled it up this morning. There are 265 homes owned by Zillow, and they are lowering the prices. So maybe get with your agent and say, hey, uh, let's take a look at a home that uh, Zillow has. And it looks to me like they're ready to take a good price. Could be a good strategy. Never know. You know, you never know in this market what people are willing to accept. But um, the argument that they're losing money and they have to stop seems like, yes, they are losing money, but they're doing it to themselves. The market isn't making them lose money. They overshot. They bought too high. Now they're adjusting. And while they adjust, they're out. So one thing that's always concerned me about these iBuyers is that when the data kind of turns it all, they don't retreat slowly. They don't retool. They just quit. This is the second time they've done that. Now, this isn't hurting anybody. If they've bought your home, you know, you've you've already sold it to them. These are homes that they've got listed now. They're reducing the price on. That's going to help you. That's a good deal because they were asking too much for them, it looks like. So nobody's been harmed by this action. As of last March, where all three of them just stopped and canceled contracts. And sometimes they'd give you five to eight thousand dollars in and earnest money, you know, to kind of offset the pain, but they just literally just on one day, all three of them were done. So the I buyers can change their buying model at any time, whenever they want. Um, and that's okay, unless you're in the middle of a transaction. So if you're in the middle of a transaction with them and you're calling the movers and the utility companies and they, you get a phone call, hey, we're done, that's not fun. You know, that, that can happen to some brokerages that all of a sudden go broke. Um, and I'm going to do a video on brokerages, how real estate agents earn their commission, what kind of commissions are out there, what's different, what kind of fees do real estate agents have. And, uh, and then we'll look at, you know, there's always an accusation with a real estate agent that, you know, they want, they want you to uh, bid higher on that house so they make more commission. We'll show you what the real answer is to that and how it really affects real estate agents. If I get you to pay 5,000 more for a home, it might surprise you. So we're going to continue to watch this. I'm not going to do video after video on Zillow, but I think, uh, you know, we'll put a little footnotes in here and we'll take a look and see what's going on. It's not affecting our market in Phoenix, 250 homes, you know, big snooze there. Um, I don't see that making inventory all of a sudden rise. So it's not really going to affect our market, but in general, we could see some significant changes in how iBuyers go to market. Zillow says they're getting back in. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes them to get rid of these 250 homes. Shouldn't take more than a couple of weeks based on how fast homes are. If you can't sell a home in this market, then you should not be in the business. So that's not the problem. So we'll see what happens. In the meantime, be back tomorrow later on the afternoon with my lender, Pat, as we do our Friday Q&A. Join us. It's a lot of fun. See you then. Mm -hmm.